Good evening and welcome to KGW News at 5 on this Sunday evening. I'm Brittany Falkers and let's get you caught up on our top stories tonight. We begin with new information on a head on crash in Cowlitz County that sent seven people to the hospital, including four kids. This happened last night around 830 along State Route 503 near Little Kalama River Road. Investigators say it looks like the driver of a car tried to pass another vehicle when it slammed head on into that car. Going the other way, police do believe drugs or alcohol played a factor in this one. 10 people total were in the two cars. Each had kids inside ranging from 1 to 16 years old. Again, seven people were taken to area hospitals. In Vancouver, three people were shot when an unknown shooter opened fire early this morning near Gustafson Park. You're looking at the map of the area right now, and we're st still gathering information, but here is what we know so far. Police say a group was in the backyard of a home around 4.30 a.m. when someone walked up and started shooting. Three people were hurt, but they should be okay. There have been no arrests or details on a suspect yet. We will continue to update you on this story on our website, KGW.com, as we get more information. I just think it's unreasonable that this is acceptable. People who live in North Portland near the Peninsula Crossing are upset with the number of homeless camps there and the city's response to the problem. The city clears these camps, but the people who live in the camps just move further into the neighborhood and neighbors are fed up. Blair Best reports from North Portland. The Peninsula Crossing Trail was once a popular bike path in North Portland. Now it's a highway for homeless campers. So this is our community area right here. To many, this may look like just another homeless camp. This is more home than any place else. Um, like this, it's more like a community, it's family. This is Titi Sanchez. Camp mom, that's what everybody calls me. <laughs> she runs the camp. Where we cook at and um, like big dinners and stuff. And like, you know, it's like a, like a banquet kind of. We've been here so long, it's like, you know, we should have some type of residency. While the camp has been here for years, Sanchez hasn't. Last year, she and her husband got an apartment through a city run program. We both had jobs, you know, we both were working and but we weren't making he wasn't making enough to pay rent. So it was just like we couldn't. It seemed like everything just went downhill after that. Four months ago, they found themselves right back in these tents. We don't want to be here, you know, this is not what we want out of our life. Like one of us, most of us want more out of our life. But for others like Jeffrey Moore. I'm kind of a free spirit. He prefers this lifestyle. Yeah, I've kind of chosen. it. Do you think it's your right that you can camp right here? Yeah, absolutely. The city just removed a handful of those camps along that trail, the peninsula crossing. But many of those living there just moved their camps a few blocks away, like here at the corner of North Princeton and Stanford. You can't pull up on the street and decide I'm going to live here. It's just not fair to the community. This RV now sits outside Judy Kane's kitchen window. It's it's insanity. I just want our city to go back to the basics. Uh, parking ordinance codes. I think the community is at its wit's end. The city plans to open a safe rest village site along the peninsula crossing this year. Tom Karwaki, who chairs the neighborhood association, hopes that will help clean up their neighborhood and give those living on their streets a place to go. We reached out to Commissioner Dan Ryan's office for comment, but didn't hear back right away. No one feels safe generally uh, from the, the housed community and even in the unhoused community. There are many people who don't feel safe. We're not monsters at all. God made us all the same. It made us all equal. So I don't see what's different. Why are people feel like they're scared of us. In North Portland, Blair Best, KGW News. An error at the St. Charles Health System in Central Oregon could force some employees to have to pay back thousands of dollars. The health system is trying to recoup two million total. The error happened when its timekeeping provider, Kronos, had an outage from last November to January of this year. St. Charles says some employees were paid more than they should have been, and it wants that money back. One nurse says her manager told her she owes $2,900. Where did they come up with this calculation? Why has not, why has evidence not been provided? Um, why has it not been made available to me to sit down with an accountant um, for every individual employee to sit down and review records and pay stubs and all of that? Um, they gave no evidence as to how they came to this number. 
That nurse says that she was offered a payment plan, but still feels blindsided. St. Charles says employees were kept informed through more than a dozen emails. The health system also says some employees were underpaid and that's been corrected. The Oregon Nurses Union says it is considering legal action on behalf of nurses being asked to repay money. Across the country, there's an urgent need for school bus drivers. Christine Pinawanich spoke with local districts about this shortage and actually tagged along with a new bus driver to get a feel behind the wheel. Around 7 o'clock in the morning, Melissa Cagle is already at work checking out her ride. Okay, lights, making sure that all the lights are working. She's a bus driver for the Beaverton School District. Hagel was hired last school year after retiring from 30 or so years of working retail. And so I just wanted to um, do something that that I enjoy because I love kids and um, gave me summers off and holidays off so I could still be with my family. District transportation officials hope to hire more people like Kegel. Currently, we are roughly about 15 to 20 drivers short just to start the school year. So Rusty Bingham gonna... says they, like so many other districts across the country, are experiencing a dire bus driver shortage. It was an issue before COVID hit, but the pandemic has made it worse. Starting pay was recently increased, and now district officials say they're the highest paying district in Washington County. Drivers also get a pension and full benefits for all family members. It's 23.39 an hour now, starting for all new drivers. With each year of experience, pay goes up, topping out at just under $30 an hour. A 2019 study out of school bus fleet found nationally the average bus driver's starting pay was $16.67 an hour. Good morning, girls. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a good day. She's very nice. Bingham, hoping more people like Cagle choose to join the team and become a friendly, familiar face for students. We make a lot of friends, that's for sure. I love it. Best job I ever had. While many districts are experiencing a bus driver shortage, different districts offer varying pay and incentives. For instance, Salem-Kaiser officials tell me they're offering up to $3,000 in incentives for people to join their transportation team. In Beaverton, Christine Pitawanich, KGW News. Shortages in schools aren't just a local issue either. Districts across the country won't have enough teachers come fall. Teachers unions in multiple states are reporting hundreds and in some cases thousands of vacancies for teachers and support staff positions. There's been a teacher shortage for years. What you're seeing now is that it's reached a tipping point. The American Federation of Teachers recommends several solutions, like a salary bump or letting teachers start before they're fully certified. 